You can have everything in life you want if you will just help other people get everything they want. Zig Ziglar. Today, we're going to talk about relationships. Welcome to Richer Soul, your journey to a more purposeful, intentional, amazing life. Where are you going to go and how are you going to get there? Let's figure that out together. At the core is financial well-being to be able to do what you want, when you want, how you want. Freedom. Some quick announcements. I'm going to do one more episode on spirituality. Next, after that, we're going to find top experts in all these areas and have them on the podcast to dig deeper into the subjects. I would like to get episodes out once a week. I'm also going to offer a two-hour coaching session to anyone who'd be willing to have the session recorded and released as a podcast episode. I believe it's important for you to hear stories from other people and see how they struggle and overcome their financial issues. Don't worry, we can change your name and keep personal financial information off the recording. If you're interested, please email me at rocky at richersoul.com. Also, if you have feedback, please do the same. I'd love to hear from you. Today, we're focused on relationships. For each of you listening, it could be vastly different. We have relationships with our parents, children, siblings, friends, workers, business people, and lovers. Throughout our lives at different times, these relationships change and take on different meaning and requirements. We need to be intentional in this part of our lives. We need to make sure, when possible, we surround ourselves with the type of people we want to be. Now, when it comes to family, you don't get to pick. However, for everything else, you do. We don't treat our parents the same way when we grow up as when we were kids, and we don't treat our lovers the same way when we court them versus after 10 years of marriage. We treat our kids differently at each stage of life, and with any luck, we have friends who support us and enjoy our lifelong journey. Remember that life changes and you need to change with it, and so do your relationships. Hopefully, none of you are in toxic relationships that make life horrible. That said, you need to remove negative people from your life who hold you back or put you down. You are the average of the five people most around you. And so picking the right people to surround yourself with is very important. Life tip. Don't make decisions for other people. Let them decide if they want to be part of your life. Be the kind of person that people want to have in their lives. That alone takes quite a bit of work on ourselves. Relationships and people are the key to our happiness much more than stuff is. And we need to make sure that they are at the top of our list. How? Zig Ziglar said it best. You can have everything in life you want if you will just help other people get what they want. Help them. That's the answer. The more you help others through life and difficult situations, the better your life will become. How do you help others? Listen to them. Encourage them. Provide feedback when asked and only when asked. Remember them and spend time with them. Make them feel important, and when you are with them, make sure they are the center of your attention and not your smartphone. In order to keep these relationships up, you need to make sure to make time in your life to be with the people you choose to have in your life. That means setting priorities and setting aside time to visit and also to help and support each other. Throughout life, the balance of the relationship goes back and forth. And at times you give more, and at other times you take more. That's okay. If a loved one of yours became sick and required $100,000 of care that was not covered by insurance, what would you do? I bet you would change your life and focus to find a way to get that money to save them. So why don't you just do it anyway, while they are well? Spend the time and your money on the people you love and care about. You only get so much time with your kids. It's 936 weeks from birth to 18. And the same goes for everyone else. Time is limited. You need to be purposeful and intentional in making sure you develop, 
build and nurture those relationships. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and other social media platforms are not real friends. These are not the meaningful relationships you truly need. Not only that, everyone only pretends that puts their best stuff on Facebook. Their real lives aren't so interesting. Unfortunately, when we are young, we are taunted and discouraged from building relationships with those above us. Think about the taunts, teacher's pet, brown noser, and it continues into the work world. However, helping other people succeed is how you succeed. There is a fine line, and you have to be doing this for the right purpose. You don't want to be a people pleaser or tell white lies. You want to help people because you genuinely care, not because you want something from them. Successful people want to surround themselves with other successful people as well. Think about that. You probably have a skill that can help others, and they want to be helped. Let's try and go through each type of relationship, and I will provide you with some guidelines. Parents, they slave to raise you, and you do have an obligation to them. It's up to you to decide that line and how much you can do. If there are multiple siblings, you should not be guilted into doing all the work. Your parents also have a responsibility to care for themselves, and if they have lived a life of mistakes, that doesn't make it your obligation to fix it. We actually have three generations living in our house. My wife's mother lives with us, and she was an invaluable help when the kids were young. Now we're returning the favor and taking care of her. Parents can bring to you wisdom that comes with ages. Many parts of the world live in intergenerational families, and it sure does help create more wealth. It's also not your responsibility to become what your parents choose. It's your life to live, and you have to make choices that make you happy. Sometimes we need to have the tough conversations. But more importantly, you should find out what they want. Don't make assumptions. Deciding on who to marry and where to live become important questions when you decide how to support your parents. Siblings. This is harder with so much emotions and obligations. I don't have any, so I can't give you much advice in this area. Speaking of which, when you seek out information... Make sure the people who are giving it to you actually have walked the path and are where you want to be. Since I don't have siblings, I can't really provide you with advice in this area. However, I do have kids, and we've been intentional in how we raise them as siblings. We make sure they build bonds and work together instead of competing against each other. We don't always treat them equally, because life is not fair, but rather provide them with what they need. We are working to be intentional in building their sibling relationship. A spouse. I think too often we don't think through the choices and consequences of picking the person we want to marry. What are their goals? What is their family like? Where do they see themselves going? It's hard to have relationships when the two of you have conflicting goals, such as one wants to work in Silicon Valley and the other wants to live near family on the East Coast. This part of life requires sacrifices on both parts, and you should have conversations about religion, kids, work, lifestyle, dreams, and how you want to live. Marriage isn't going to be equal. Sometimes things are going to be unbalanced, and having to share finances is very difficult. The more you have these difficult conversations and find a way forward that works makes for a happy marriage. It's important. And if you are not married, to do so before you get married. Let's face it, divorce takes half your money, and that's a big hurdle to overcome, along with the years of fighting through the separation. There's a theme here. Be intentional in who you want as a partner in your life. Examine more than the way they look, or the fact that you don't have a lover, and so this one will do. For much of civilization, parents and families were involved in helping pick spouses. The concept of a love marriage is a relatively new phenomena. Whatever your philosophy, pay attention to your spouse and help support them. Make sure your plans work together for the betterment of both of you. Kids have a goal and a purpose for them. Now understand, demanding they become a doctor is not a good goal because it's not what they may want. Learning to raise kids who are smart, understand money, volunteer, are self-sufficient, and have social intelligence 
are much more the types of goals that I'm thinking about. Teach them how to behave, how to react, to have self-confidence, to solve problems, and to understand how the world works. This is more your purpose, helping them to find their path, not picking it for them. You also have to teach them how to be good siblings and get along. Too often people have low expectations for their kids, and it seems to be getting worse. According to an article in the New York Times, in 1957, 92% of kids were toilet trained by the age of 18 months. Today, that figure for two-year-olds is just 4%, according to a large-scale Philadelphia study. How did we regress? We spoil kids, that's why. And then you wonder why they are living in your basement at age 30. We probably should devote an episode to raising kids, because it seems most people just are not doing a great job. I have a 14 and a 16-year-old, and we hardly have issues. Life is pretty good. That's not the norm for American teenagers. And one of the main reasons is because parents don't have relationships with their kids. They're too busy, or they don't treat them as equals. Now, please understand, being equal doesn't mean that they get to make the choices. What I mean is equal in a human way. They need to be understood and supported. And as Zig said, you are helping them to get what they want in life. This doesn't mean a new iPhone and more stuff. Those are the wrong priorities. It means you support their efforts in education and listen to their feelings and actually help them through the difficult times. When teenagers are not respectful of parents, Maybe many times it's because the parents have not shown respect to their kids. It's your job to teach them. Please don't expect the public school to do that for you. People never die regretting they spent too much time with their family. The reality is kids grow up fast, so make the time. I don't think a dying person ever said, I wish I spent more time at work. This is important to remember and to practice. Many successful people don't spend enough time on their home life, and it's out of balance, which creates a lot of resentment and anger and can lead to divorce. You have to live your life in balance in all ways, otherwise at some point your spouse, your kids, are going to walk out on you. Too many people don't focus on this at all, and they miss the journey. There will be times when life gets out of balance for short periods of time. This is okay. However, You will never regain the time when your kids are young. Friends, everybody needs them. You actually get to pick them, unlike family. So be purposeful in the people you surround yourself with. You are the average of five people around you, and if your friends are holding you back or living a life of consumption, the same is going to happen to you. It's just human nature. You would be surprised at how many high-level successful people look for younger successful people to support and mentor. They are not fearful of successful people. They want to be surrounded by success, and they understand what Zig said. Help enough people get what they want, and you will have everything you want. People at work may not be your friends. However, having a best friend at work makes it much more likely that you will enjoy your job and want to stay there. It may also make sense to build a group of friends with a variety of talents and professions to help you grow. Building connections and having people help you achieve what you want is important. We can't do this alone, and the most successful people usually have teams that complement them. Business and work relationships. These are the key to building wealth. Everyone needs people who will help propel them forward, open doors, and provide opportunities. The key here is to build relationships long before you need them. Don't wait until you need or want something to start creating the relationship. Help people make their jobs and businesses successful, and they will reward you well. Today, many jobs are gotten through relationships, not through want ads. You can't wait till you need a job to start building that relationship. The same thing goes for business recommendations. We're far more likely to do business with someone that a friend has recommended than just to look and find one on the internet. Regardless of the relationship, you need to give before you receive and you can't keep score. Set your expectations and be intentional. Put time in your calendar to meet with people you want to spend time with. Focus on them and helping them achieve their goals. 
Introducing people to the people they want to meet is another great way to help people. People are busy, emails get lost, and you never know what they're going through in life. The ratio of giving to receiving is not that great. But when it happens, the returns are massive. By the way, can you do me a favor? Remember to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes so you know when a new episode is released. And if you like what you hear, please leave a review or a rating of the show as it helps to get the word out. And lastly, if you know someone who can benefit from this information, please share the podcast with them. It's a great way to build a relationship and help people out. Also, if you have a question or comment, or I get something wrong, please email me. It's rocky at richersoul.com. You can always join the mailing list on richersoul.com so you always know what's going on. One of the best ways to build relationships is to shut up. It seems counterintuitive, and it's opposite of what we normally do. Just listen. Ask pointed questions that show you're following the story, and you will build amazing relationships. This is really a gem, as most people are thinking about trying to one-up someone or their next thought instead of just focusing on listening to the person in front of them. See things not from your perspective, but from theirs. Why do they hold the opinions they have? And why are they taking their stand? Having the curiosity to understand them and even acknowledge when they are right. This helps them to also see your point of view as well. Most people refuse to look at other person's point of view. No one remembers what you said. They remember how you made them feel. This is a key point and a lot of nonverbal actions are involved in this as well. Remember to keep your word and show up when you promise you will be there. I know some people have a habit of saying yes to a meeting until something better comes along and they back out. I can assure you I will never invite you back if that's the way you behave. If people tell you something in confidence, don't share it. Gossip is not good for relationships. Don't always assume things about other people. Introverts love to have conversations. They just don't have the energy to give it in all situations, and they may have some amazing insights for your life. Also, make friends with people at all different levels of life. You never know who can help you with the problems you may encounter in life. It's nice to know people who can help you get stuff done behind the scenes. The admin to the CEO has just as much ability to help you as the CEO because they have the keys to the resources as well. That person's also a lot more accessible to you and has the time to help you. Don't forget, their mother is another great resource to get to them. Don't forget to tell people what you want and need. It's okay if they say no or they can't help you, but be clear in who you are and what your expectations are. You would be surprised at what happens when you share your desires with the world. There are two amazing books on building relationships. The first is a classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. The second is Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrarzi. If you have never read either of these books, I recommend that you pick one and do so. Let's make that today's challenge, to read or reread one of these books. Every time you reread these books, a different insight will come out. It's important that you spend a lot of time giving before you expect any returns. The returns you get may also not be direct. That means you help one person who connects you with someone else who returns that favor. The key, though, is to always be giving. Social capital is something we don't talk very much about, and many people just plain don't build. It takes a lot of time and effort to build this capital, as well as just like the compound interest curve, the more you invest in social capital, the faster it will compound. This is not about networking where everyone is out to promote themselves, but rather back where we started, where you were out to help people achieve what they want. There are many people out there who have passions for certain things. They love it so much they don't even care if they get paid to do it, because it's enjoyable to them. Finding these people and connecting and learning from them is a great way to get ahead. Ask the right questions and learn. 
Then implement what you've learned and share your success back to the person who taught you. Throughout these episodes, you've probably heard recurring things. Everything must be done in the correct order and sequence, like the story about baking a cake in the right order or you end up with a mess. Time is a major factor in that you have to put in the effort and keep going until you hit that spot where the curve starts to bend upward and you see massive success. People generally look at success and think, oh, he was lucky or he's a natural talent. They rarely talk about the massive amount of time and work that went into getting to that place. You need to be intentional in your life and choices. Do the hard work and put the effort in. Don't forget today's challenge of reading a book about building relationships. I provided two great suggestions, Never Eat Alone or How to Win Friends and Influence People, or you can find one that you like better. Before we close out this session, I want you to understand my role. It's a dual role. Part one is conductor. Too often in life, we have so many competing priorities, and we need help in finding a way to keep them in harmony. Work takes over, or family pulls us in a new direction, or our finances go south. Having someone to help you look over all those pieces and find balance is the job of a conductor. The second role is Sherpa. If you want to climb Mount Everest, you need a few Sherpas, guides who know the way and can help you get to the top. In both of these roles, it's you that has to do the work. I'm just here to educate, guide, teach, and show you a path. Since I don't know you personally, you need to make sure this is the right path for you. Let's build a more purposeful, meaningful, happy life. One of financial independence that allows you to live the way you choose, not the way others want to sell you on. You're already in the top 1% of the world. Let's make use of that money to serve you as a better tool. In our next episode, we're going to talk about spirituality. Have a great week.